Hi, this is your girl, Lynette, and we are in the 2022 Wear Your Crown Speaker Series, Building a Queendom. This is your girl, Lynette Fletcher, Miss BBW Delaware 2016-2017, Miss Fashion Global 2020, and your pageant director for the big, beautiful women of Delaware. And today, we have a phenomenal, very powerful queen, Kiana Griffin. How are you? Hello, Antoinette. I'm doing well. And thank you so much for this opportunity to be on. I'm so grateful for this opportunity. Well, I am so excited. I see that you are doing a number of fabulous things. Not that you never, uh, like you are always doing something. So a little background, you guys. She is a fellow Wildcat. We went to yes. Bethune-Cookman College, aka now Bethune-Cookman University together. And I like, share, and follow the work that she is doing. And she is here to share what she is doing. Kiana, can you introduce yourself? Yes, I can. So my name is Kiana Griffin. And um, like Antoinette, uh, and it already, already stated, we met at Bethune-Cookman University. And it was Bethune-Cookman College in 1994. So we came in as freshman crabs together. Yes. You remember that? We had to put on our head and say our name, where we were from. Girl, and yes, I, and I we were in the band. 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 So you know, we were crabs crab. until classic. Yes, girl. <laughs> a long time, I remember. And so um, what I do is I'm a sickle cell advocate. I have my own sickle cell organization in Daytona Beach, Florida. And actually, my physical location currently is in Daytona Beach. But I am the only um, sickle cell association in the northern, north central Florida region. So that means I have four counties in Florida. I cover Volusia County, which is east and west. I cover Flagler County that's going north. And then right after Flagler, I cover Putnam County and St. John's County. And I start right there at Jacksonville because they have their own sickle cell. Okay, that is awesome. So for people who are not sure what sickle cell is, can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So sickle cell is an inherited blood disease. And it, it derived from the continent of Africa and actually Sahara Africa. And that's where the origination came from. And it originated from the disease malaria. So it's a carryover from malaria. So it was predominantly in African-Americans, but because we have so many African-Americans and loves all over the world, it spread it to so many different areas. So it's important that I educate. It's important that I advocate. And it's important that I inspire and motivate those that have the traits and the anemia or the disease, because it's a myth that it's the only Black person's disease. That is an absolute myth. And it's not a myth. You are born with it. There's only one way you can obtain this disease, and that's because of the traits of the mother and the father. And that's how the disease is passed along. In the blood gene, you have to have a trait from the mother and the father a trait in a trait equals the disease. Uh, so is it something that can skip a generation or skip a child because it's somewhere in that family line? So when you say the word skip, um, it, it can skip, meaning it can hit and miss because it is with the numbers. So say, for instance, um, there's a parent that has a trait and a mom has the trait and the dad has the trait. So there's a one in four chance that one of those children will have the disease. That's just a chance. But I know a mom who the mom and the dad had the trait and all of her children had the disease. I know a mom that had the trait, the dad had the trait. And out of the two children, only one had the, um, the disease and the other child had nothing. Um, and that's amazing as well. Okay. But God is in control of everything. So, Are there symptoms that we should be looking for? Well, if you have the disease, you would definitely know it because it's detected. When you're born, more than likely, you have that in your family history. So the, the information is after 1988, the test was not a mandated test in the hospitals for newborns. Unless there was an actual, you know, cycle or history, a known history, you know, at that doc in that um, hospital of your family having it. Now, those that have the trait, now that's the tricky part right there. Do you know there are students that went to Cookman with us? They are in their 30s and 40s right now. 
are just finding out they have the trait because again, after 1988, it was not a mandated test. So they were not automatically tested for it. Because you know, in our generation, we were born in the 70s. Yeah. So if they didn't have that in their family, with a lot of major people that had the um, trait or disease in their family, they were not tested on. It was not, you know, was not mandated, depending on where they lived as well. Okay. So how did you get, how did you end up working with um, sickle cell? Is it sickle cell anemia or just sickle cell? It's sickle cell because it's anemia and trait. So we just say sickle cell. Okay. So um, I graduated from Bethune Cookman University, was college then, but I graduated in 2003. And so I started teaching in Volusia County. And then I went to Flagler County, but it was just something I wanted to do more. It's like, it was just something like a tug at me, like it has to be something more I can do. I had made, you know, um, impacts on children's lives and I had done things that I was grateful and proud of, but it was just something else I need. It was something I needed to do, but I didn't know what it was. So I remember in the month of February in the year of 2009, cause I graduated in 2003. So in 2009, I was just looking through jobs and I saw a case manager position at the Volusia County Sickle Cell Association. And I said, I'm going to get this job. I remember I was sitting in my bed and I said, I'm going to get this job. So I called and I got an interview, went and I got the job. Not even knowing, because I had never done case management work ever. I just wanted to do something else. And it seemed like something I could, I would want to do. I didn't know anything about sickle cell. And the crazy part is my boyfriend at, at Cookman, we used to go to his home all the time. And all my children are from him. We used to go to his home in Miami on holidays and stuff. I never knew why his brother had to go to bed with drink at his bed. Or he always was thirsty. He had the disease. And I never knew it. Did not know this. So when I, um, when I went ahead and um, got the interview, that's when I learned so much. And it opened up my life to like, oh my gosh, I am helping, like literally helping people lives. And it gave me so much more meaning. So after that, it's like, that was it. That was it. That was it. That is awesome. And, <laughs> and, and amazing. And I'm glad that you were doing the work. I am not that familiar with sickle cell. I believe we have an advocate here in Delaware as well, but we'll have to double check that. I'll have to connect you, you to to ensure that you guys are, are partnering together and ensuring that we are yeah. safe and health, healthy and doing what we need to do to live productive and, and fulfilling lives. So if people want more information about sickle cell, where do they go? So I am actually um, typing it in the chat so you can leave it at the bottom. So, and it's so awesome that you said you have someone in Delaware. There's someone in different um, states, different countries that have sickle cell um, advocacy with their organization. So with me, I do have a, uh, I'm on social media. I'm on Instagram, Levi Long Sickle Cell. I'm on Facebook, the Levi Long Sickle Cell Association. Um, I'm on Snapchat, Le the Levi Long Sickle Cell Association. You can reach me by phone. I'll leave my contact information. Even if you want to donate to my organization, if you know you want, you have someone in your family or you're strong about it or passionate, you're welcome to donate. I just opened, I'm opening up my center and I'm opening it up on this Saturday coming up. I'm so excited to have my grand opening. And it is so amazing because now I have a place for my clients to come. The old center that we did have, um, the center was closed. The um, owner, Miss. Lydia Williams, who taught me the things that I know, she resigned and she did pass away last year. Well, remember um, Dr. Dean, T Dean T Taylor's house on the corner? Yes. Well, they tore it down. And so the office that I was in, that's where Bethune Cookman bought it. And that's where those um, employees are and that were in Dr. Taylor's home. That's where they are. And so I needed a facility. I needed somewhere for our um, sickle cell clients to come and, you know, be able to talk and stuff. I was just doing things from home for years. So now we have a space. I'm so excited. So I didn't even just limit it to the Sickle Cell Association. I made it a life center. Nice. So it's a, a life center for not only for my Sickle Cell clients, but also for those in the community, if they need help or assistance with things. Because I learned that it's a gap. We have a gap in the community. We have so many awesome services, you know, but then we have our community, then there's a, a big old gap. So being that I've been in Daytona Beach for 31 years, 
when you guys left, I stayed. <laughs> <laughs> and so I got familiar with a lot of the community um, organizations here. And so I've been able to help people. You know, I, I've been just helping people. So I say, well, might as well put it together and help people in the right way. So I'm connecting with the Department of Health and the bethune Cook University have just partnered with me to do a um, sickle cell this year. I'm so excited. I don't know what to do. So listen out because you'll be hearing a lot of information. I'll make sure I keep and then in, um, encouraged, well, not encouraged, but informed of everything that we're doing. And when you come for homecoming this year, I'm, I'm really planning on, at, you know, having a tour of, of my, my fellow Wildcats coming and, you know, just doing great things in the community with this. That is awesome. Thank you so much for the work that you do. Where is this building located? Like the address? address. It's in the heart of Daytona, and the, the best way I can say it is, it's right there by Church's Chicken. You can't miss Church's Chicken. And the address is 984 Orange Avenue, Daytona Beach, Florida, 32114. All right, that's Orange Avenue in Daytona Beach, Florida, and it is a life center. So yes. not only can you learn about sickle cell, get services, but there are a plethora of other services happening in that building. If you are in the Daytona Beach area, please reach out to Kiana. Now, how can we support? You can reach um, support via Cash App at the dollar sign Long Sickle. And you'll see a picture of me holding... Uh, um, uh, actual paper that has a whole sickle and a whole cell and a sickle cell because that's the difference of the shape and that's the cash app you can also donate via zelle at kiana griffin at live.com i'm putting all of this in the chat so you can post it um if you would like to mail the donation uh, via mail post mail i'll make sure you get a thank you card to make sure you get notice, notice of the thank you that you did. And every dime that I receive, it goes to the Life Center. It helps those. I mean, I'm just so grateful because I'm branching out greatly at the Life Center. So I'm excited for the grand opening this Saturday from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. And I'm very excited. That is awesome. So are you also looking for volunteers or is the staff fully staffed with with people and individuals to support the individuals coming in? Actually, I love having volunteers. If you know anyone in the area, or even if you visit Daytona, you're welcome to come in and volunteer. And then the way you can volunteer is you can help by um, um, putting papers in the folder. It's always, it's going to always be something to do. It's never going to be a day where I can just sit and look around. It's always going to be something to do. All right, so you heard it here. She is in Daytona Beach, Florida. Not only is she supporting, educating, and helping people with sickle cell, but running a life center in Daytona Beach, Florida. If you're interested in volunteering, sharing your skills and your talents, please hit her up. We have her information in the comments below. If you want to donate her cash app, her Venmo, and other ways you can donate is also below. Be sure to check out dollar sign long sickle, L-O-N-G-S-I-C-K-L-E or Zell, Kiana Griffin at live.com. And again, we will put that in the comments. If you are interested in mailing a check, you can send it to the Levy Long Sickle Cell Association at 984. Orange Avenue, Daytona Beach, Florida, 32114. Kiana, thank you so much for the work that you do. You guys, if you do not know Kiana, please check out her pages and get to know her. Uh, the authentic work that she <laughs> does. And the authentic, like this just fits. If you know Kiana, this just fits. Her heart has always been for community for people, for the Wildcat family. We are so Ooh, glad to have you. I love to meet the Wildcats, honey. <laughs> so is there anything you want to leave us with as we sign off? Yes. If you have a passion to do something, listen, don't wait. What are you waiting on? I don't care what, if it's making toilet paper thicker, whatever it is, and you have a passion and you want to do it, go for it. 
do it because nobody can do something better than you can. We all have a, a talent. We all have abilities. Go for whatever you have a passion to do. Go, go, go. You heard it here at the Wear Your Crown series with Kiana Griffin. If you have something laid on your heart in 2022, just do it. Thank you, Kiana. Yes. Thank you, Annette. I appreciate you so much. Mwah. Mwah. <laughs>